Hi, my name is Jennifer Belmont, and in this video, you'll learn about Polymer, the new technology running YouTube.com. So YouTube.com now has an app that runs entirely on Polymer, the, the front end at least. You can go to it at YouTube.com slash new and try it out right now. It's the same YouTube that you know right now, but it runs Polymer, which is what we're going to talk about today. In this video, you learn what Polymer is and how it uses powerful components to create large web apps. You learn how YouTube has changed to leverage Polymer with its reusability and modularity. You learn how and when to write Polymer components with regards to writing plain HTML elements. And then you'll learn how Polymer can build large web apps such as YouTube. Let's talk about Polymer. Polymer is a library written by Google it's not a framework where you have to learn an entirely new set of constructs and concepts. Instead, it's built on the web platform to leverage what's already in your browser natively. It's built on the web component specification, so you could use it with any other web components libraries. The power of Polymer and web components in general is being able to write modular and reusable components. So you could write one component and use it in multiple places, and you can compose them together to create larger web apps. Let's write a simple Hello World Polymer component. So first we import the Polymer library. And then here is where we set up the skeleton, the template for what our element will look like. Here we just have it print hello and then a name which we'll pass in later. In here is where we actually define what the element is. So in the is we say that this will be a hello world, hello dash world tag. And properties it just has a name. To use our hello world component, we simply import the component and then we declare it using the hello world tag. So this looks just like an HTML tag that we created ourselves. We set the name to be YouTube and then when we run this, it'll just print hello YouTube in the browser. So what has actually changed in the new YouTube? So YouTube runs on Polymer now, which shows that a large web app can be built with Polymer components, with web components. It shows that there's power in reuse and modularity that being able to create components and then compose them together lets you create a large web app fairly easily. And the important thing is that the new YouTube doesn't actually change the functionality. I watch a lot of YouTube and it's just the same. Now let's learn how to build with components because Polymer builds components. So components favor composition. So we use components as basic building blocks for our application, which means they could be individual units but it also means that we're going to be subdividing large, large components into smaller components. Components can contain other components, and it's often valuable to think about our application as a large component that will then be broken down into smaller components. So we start with our app, and then we put it in sections, and then subsections, and then a list of items, and down and down, as, so that we have atomic units of components that we could put next to each other. And each component should do one thing well, where it's a simple object like a button or a tab. And then you can have a set of buttons and then you can have a set of tabs as a component, something that contains, but those are one thing. Or it should be a component that works in lots of different contexts. So something like a complicated layout that works differently based on the context around it. Or it could be a non-visual component, something like an authentication manager, which depends on the state of your application to work in different ways. But it could still work as a component. Like I said, there could be visual and non-visual components. So things like buttons and tabs are visual components. But then routing and database access can be non-visual components. So you could use Polymer to create all sorts of different components into a larger web app. You could find a directory of web components at webcomponents.org. So this is where you'll find all of Polymer components and other component libraries like Vaadin Elements. And from here, you could see and use lots of different components for everything from buttons to authentication to database management to grids, on and on. This is where you go to find components to use for yourself. Let's take a quick look at youtube.com to see how they use components to build their app. This is the Vaadin YouTube page, and let's open up the source. So what do we see? 
So right away, we see this YTD app element. So this is a component that represents the entire YouTube app that we see here. Uh, we open it up and then suddenly we see a whole bunch of non-visual components. So one that manages authentication, one that manages navigation and the network with a playlist that all happen in the background while you're using the rest of the app. And then if we go down to the content, this is where all of the uh, components that make up the page are. So there's the mass head component and then there's this page manager which selects what's going on in the page. So that's the browse and the watch which changes if we click on one of these things. So you see that the watch has changed. We're no longer browsing, we're watching the page. So this is what the page manager does. So we saw a whole lot of different components that were in the page, an authentication, a browser, the masthead, all of these are different kinds of components. So when would you use a Polymer component, especially in relation to when would you use that instead of an HTML component? So oftentimes, plain HTML is enough. So the container element that there was there was just a div that contained things. Inside, there are more complicated elements like the browse and the watch elements, which do more things. So you should keep in mind that HTML all of this is HTML really, but sometimes you don't need to use a component because what exists already is sufficient. So here are a couple of rules of thumb for when you're building with components. If what you need isn't very fancy, so something like a container or a button, then just use HTML5. These are things like an anchor for a link, a button for a button, a P for a text. You don't necessarily need to create a fancy component for any of these. If you just need some style or animation, then again, just use an HTML element. There's no reason to create an entire component for italicized font. You could always do that with CSS. If you have a basic layout, don't, you don't need to necessarily have a layout element when you could just have divs that work with your layout, Flexbox or whatever. And if you have a simple animation like a spinner, then you don't necessarily need to have a component for that. You could just have something that works with CSS animations. But if you have something a little bit more complicated, something that composes with each other, or something that depends on context of other elements, then you could use a Polymer component for that. So these are things like an advanced layout that changes based on where in the page you are. It could be context sensitive content, things like uh, navigation or authentication, which you might want to have in a separate component. And if you have an item, out of a list of items, something like you saw before, subdividing sections into sections, then that's something that you might want to make a component with. If what you're doing is particularly JavaScript heavy, if you find yourself needing to create and distribute different nodes within JavaScript, it might be good to make a component with that, something that contains all of the information that a component might need, both the template and the JavaScript. So this is good for things that are non-visual components like the authentication or navigation. And it's also good for things that have complex behavior, something like a modifiable layout. And it also helps with data flow, like with the database management, for example. But I think the most important rule of thumb is for everything else, if you don't know if it should be a component, try making it with HTML. And if not, then try to make a component. HTML does a lot of things for you. It has divs and spans and anchors for links, it has headings, it has lists that don't necessarily need to have their own built component. Let's go back to the new YouTube page and see what we can learn from what we've just went over. So we'll open up the source and let's go to this set of videos. So you see this is a set of items and in each of these items you'll have these videos which are arranged in this grid. Um, you have a couple of containers, and here you'll see that the thumbnail, this entire box, is one element that contains a lot of different functions. Here, the, there's an anchor tag, which is just the link, so if you want to watch the video, you could just click this. But also inside this anchor tag, because you want to be able to click on all of this, you have the set of overlays. So inside these overlays, you have the little button here, that lets you um, 
click to watch later. And then you have the time is also in here somewhere. It's a different thumbnail. I, oh, it's this one. This is, this is the overlay for the time of the video. And you see that we have this array of lots of different videos and each of them is gonna work the same way. But because this is one component, it contains all of that data that we needed. Uh, it contains all of the information that we need for watching one video. And then inside of this, you can have the, the link, which is just a plain HTML tag because you just want it to be a link. So that's inside of a component. So this is composing components with HTML elements to create a better component or a full, a full component representing one thing. So you see that YouTube is a large web app built with Polymer components. It probably has a lot of more interesting things in the back end, but you saw from the front end that you could just have components within components and a set of components, each of them doing a specific thing or working in a bigger context with Polymer components to build this large web app. And you could use the same kind of idea to build your own web app. Let's go over what we've learned in this video. So you've learned what Polymer is, a library for building reusable and modular components built on web standards. We saw how YouTube has changed to use Polymer. We saw when and how to write Polymer components with regard to HTML elements. And we saw that Polymer can build large web apps, such as the new YouTube. You could find more resources at vaden.com elements or polymer-project.org for Polymer information. All of this will be available in the show notes. Thank you so much for watching.